everyone this morning. May God keep you, and happy Father Day to all the fathers. Good morning, Mr. Beth. How are you this morning? morning? Good morning, everybody. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Good morning. Today we will be studying about the hill by faith. And I'm just going to give you a little history of the story about a pastor that had a talk with one of the members of the church and how God is good and how he keeps blessing. Even after Pastor James retired from the pool pit, he felt called to minister to people in need. He volunteered for the prayer line at the local TV station. While answering the phone, he received a call from a young woman by the name of Sandra, who was complaining, com complaining suicide. Sandra told the pastor about her past abuse relationship and how she constantly failed at everything she attempted. She didn't see reason to keep going in the world. Pastor James listened and was overwhelmed with compassion for Sandra and wept for her as he began to pray. He decided to personally follow up on Sandra's following her and he received no answer and grew concerned. He prayed much harder. On his fourth try, Sandra answered. She told the pastor she was very depressed and wanted to commit suicide. She also mentioned she had told God, if you are real and have someone, someone to call me and pray for me, that's just what God laid on my heart to do, Pastor James said. But because of his compassion, Pastor James was able to bring Sandra to a decision for Christ. Jesus always responds to those who despite who's confused, their hopelessness, and their helplessness. How do you communicate your hopelessness? How do you respond when people share their hopelessness with you? And I keep in mind says, Jesus turned around and when he said, daughter, be encouraged, your faith has made you well. And the woman was healed at that moment. And that's found over in Matthew 19, Matthew 9, 22. Over in Matthew 9, 18, it says, As Jesus was saying this, the leader of a Saginaw came and kneeled before him. My daughter has just died, he said, but you can bring her back to life again if you just come and lay your hands on her. So Jesus and his disciples got up and went with him. Just then a woman who had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding came up behind him. She touched the fringe of his robe, for she thought, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was healed at that moment. Amen. Sister Ben. I want to ask you this question, Minister Ben. I want to ask you this question. As we go through trials and tribulations in life, and sometimes our families take us through things, and we as God's people, we get hurt, or say that we're sick and we don't want to talk about it. How would you feel if you could just touch Jesus' heart? I would feel like the woman. I would feel healed. Me too. Um, Jesus is all around us, you know, uh, God as well, you know, he's our creator, there, that's right. he's our creator and his son is with us as well, and they hear everything that we say, that's right, I don't have to, you know, a lot of people, they say, uh, who are you talking to, I can't see, no, you don't have to see, but we have that it's, faith, it's all in here, it's our faith, it's, that's it's, right, it's, it's, it's mentally how you feel, you feel, Things, things that I have done it might be things that I've never thought of, but it's something that's deep down in here that says, do this. And I'm it's like, like a, with the issue of blood, and could you imagine, okay, say we um, at the Native Omaha days, and there's millions of people around, and I don't feel very well, and the Lord has blessed Jesus to come and visit me, 
Don't you know I just make my, my way through too if I just touch him or if I just get a piece of his love. Wind go by me. And if I think that would heal me, I would be that just like that one with the issue of blood. Lord, if you just help me, maybe, you know, the sickness will leave out of my body, the cancer will leave out of my body, these headaches will leave, these migraines I'm having, my leg and stuff that I can't hardly move no more, my hips, my back. So if I can just touch you, you can heal me. Mm -hmm. That's having good faith you in God. Just stretch out your hand and know yeah. that you Yeah, just wave at me. Just let me know that you just know what you know, that you can take and help me and heal me and, and take me through this when I don't know how I'm going to make it and stuff. And I'm thinking about committing suicide, but if I go and talk to you, that faith and stuff, you know, you always have a ram in the bush and send somebody right on time. Because God uses people like he used the pastor. Amen. So it's, it doesn't necessarily, you know, God may, may tell somebody, I need you to go talk to this person. I need you to tell them it's all right. And that's how he uses people. He uses everybody. Amen. People, you know, that's what I tell yeah. when, when I talk to people out on the streets, and they're like, I ain't a preacher. No. You don't have to be. You don't have to be. You know, if there's something in your heart that says you need to come to me, I've had people come to me that don't even know what's going on in my life. Amen. Don't even know. And say, look, it's going to be all right. Amen. I don't know why I'm saying this. This ain't coming to me. But, but it's Lord good. Told me. That's right. So just smile and keep smiling. Amen. And they don't know me from Adam's Amen. Amen. So verse 23 says, when Jesus arrives at the official home, he says the noisy crowd, he saw the noisy crowd and heard the funeral music. Mm -hmm. Get out, he told them. The girl isn't dead. She's only asleep. But the crowd laughed at him. After the crowd was outside, and, and however, Jesus went in and took the girl by the hand, and she stood up. Yes, she did. The report of this miracle swept through the entire countryside. Amen. And then um, in depth, in verses 18 and 19, it says, Jairus, a leader from the Saginaw, interprets Jesus as he speaks to John, the Baptist's disciple. Jairus falls down before Jesus and makes a desperate request for him to raise his daughter. She was 12 years old from the dead. The father says, but if you will come and lay your hands up on her, she will live. So that's the kind of faith he had. He just wanted him just to lay his hands on her. This is also the only reference in the book of Matthew regarding the laying on the hands. We see Jesus and his disciples immediately got up to follow Jairus. God immediately responded to a genuine faith because he desires that we should trust and depend on him. Being interpreted and delayed by the lying women could have easily discouraged Jairus. Although the worst had happened, the Son of God has authority over death and the power to restore life. Jesus is touched by the faith Jairus displays. Jesus knows what is best for us and we must trust him to touch our needs. Jairus is an example of how our leaders should approach Christ and humanity. Worship and faith. Most of us have experienced loved ones dying so we can understand the desperation Jairus felt. At times of hopelessness, do we ask Jesus for a touch? Yes, all believers do. Anytime we're going through something, we ask Jesus. Compassion for helplessness that explains verses 20 uh, through 22. Amen. A woman with a chronic <clears throat> bleeding problem touches Jesus' clothing and is healed by her faith in him. Matthew uses the phrase, and behold, to interrupt the story about the dead girl to introduce the hemorrhaging woman. She was considered to be unclean, contaminated, and unworthy. According to the Mosaic law, she was cut off from the Jewish community and ostracized. The woman was desperate and unable to help herself, but she purposed in her heart that if she could just touch the hem, the fringe, the tassel of Jesus' garment, he would never know and she would be healed. Desperation and faith 
stir Jesus to compassion, for he knows, he who knows all can help all. Amen. This poor woman had been cut off from society and family according to the Jewish tradition. Jesus turned and saw her for her faith and touched him. Faith will never go unnoticed or ignored by Christ. Potent, <clears throat> pointedly, Jesus commands this woman's faith and calls her daughter. Even as he makes his way to heal Jairus' daughter, to God, we are each his daughter or his son, each dearly loved and always welcome in his presence with any of our many needs. Now, I think, uh, ask yourself, what do we need Jesus to touch for us? Cancer, depression, um, what would you say? As long as Jesus gives me the faith, I know I can make it through anything. Not only do we have cancer or depression, we have people that need some money right now, an income, they need a job, they need someone to really talk to them because people are so suicidal right now because of the virus and they just need to know what they know and trust more in the Lord. So right now, you know, everybody needs somebody to talk to and you might even go to the gas station, the grocery store, you'll be on the road and people are just, you know, rambunctious, they want to just take over or they're just angry, let them have it. It was a lady in the grocery store. I watched them. She was in the grocery store, and another lady was there, and she just cut in front of her. And her sister told her, she said, well, you cut in front of her. And the other lady looked at her. She said, I am sorry. And the other lady looked at her. She said, no worries. She said, go ahead. It's not that important to me. That's the way we have to do. We have to play more peaceful right now. Mm -hmm. And we got to take and be around people with peace. We got to bring peace upon people because everyone is angry and touchy right now. Yep. So you ha you kind of walk around ticking time bombs right now. So you just be careful, especially driving. Yeah, because we have we have you know addicts out there that need help. We have Absolutely. marriages are In dissipating yeah. uh, for we got little gambling. Yeah, people yeah. are stealing more. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of things in society right now, and it's just when you have that faith, and that's yeah. the key. To yeah, have that, that faith, faith is the same thing we have. That faith the size of a mustard seed. Because mm -hmm. I can recall when um, uh, my husband was waiting for me in the store. I just went into the store real quick mm -hmm. and he was playing the gospel music and he turned it way up and he was singing with the gospel music. People gathered around the car to listen to him sing and when he was done they all clapped. Yeah. And a lot of them uh, because they needed that. And a lot of people Right mm -hmm. now, they don't have any churches to go to, so everybody's just and everything virtual. But everybody needs something to hold on in life. And then right now, we get ready to go over to Compassion of Healing. It says, and that goes from verse 23 through 26. It says, by the time Jesus arrived at Jerry's house, the girl's funeral has begun. The musicians, Gentile customs, they would play melody tools to stir up the grief and mourning of those attendants. Jesus sends away all the noisemakers, keeping only those who have faith. Jesus can perform this miracle. Despite the hopelessness of the crowd, Jairus' faith called Jesus to his daughter, <clears throat> deathbed, and sample, and that simply, yet both the request is enough to change the outcome as Jairus asked Jesus, lays his hands on his daughter and she lives. Jesus acts as a healing and resurrection were not just personal, but restored the woman and the girl to the whole community. Indeed, the word of the girl resurrection goes out to the entire region. When we act on faith and receive God's blessing, it builds the faith of everyone in our community who witness our blessings. How has an act of faith in your community make surprising wide ripple effect? Just seeing churches back open, mm -hmm. that's an act of faith to me. And, and that's a teach. blessing. And we get to teach again. Mm -hmm. 
but it'd be even better when we all get together in God's house and we're on a one accord again when everybody can be present and we can be back to normal and put all this behind us and let God know we thank him for the faith but thank him most of all for keeping us through this and our families. I'm going to read a little bit on the background of everything that we've been talking about. Amen. Um, Matthew writes a cluster of miracle narratives, one healing narrative inside the framework of another. First, there is the desperate cry of the synagogue ruler for the life of his daughter. Next, there is the hopelessness of a woman with a 12-year-old bleeding disorder. Both stories tell of desperation, and each one can stand independent from the others. These narratives demonstrate the authority, power, and compassion of Jesus. His fame had spread throughout the region, and thousands of people were following him because everywhere he went, he cured every disease and sickness. Today, there are many reasons people follow Jesus. Maybe it is what their friends are doing, or maybe simply to receive a blessing. Mm -hmm. The scribes and Pharisees, however, follow Jesus to test the validity of his being the son of David, the Messiah. Jesus was their king, but they would not acknowledge him. They were trying to discredit him and find a reason to put him to death. The Pharisees went so far as to say, he cast demons out of people by the power of the ruler of the demons. But the people were saying, it was never so seen in Israel. Jesus is moved to deep compassion by what he sees people confused, leaderless, scattered, and dying in their sins. Amen. When, um, <clears throat> when you were reading, uh, Minister Beth, I noticed it said, um, Jesus cast out demons. It doesn't say Jesus cast out demons. Yeah, I know that's just, that. yeah, that's what the Pharisees wanted to say. They wanted to believe that Jesus really cast out demons, but he did not. Jesus is a God of compassion and of peace and of faith. Jesus is only there to keep us encouraged, to let us know that we can make it when we think we can't make it. Jesus is also there when we don't know where to go and who to turn to, that he's a shoulder to lean on. He is a person to keep us propped up. When we want to cry, he will dry those tears from our eyes, get us on the right track. When we're going through grief, he's that same God that sits high and low, that carries us through. When we're taken, don't know which way to turn when our kids are giving us trouble, he's that same God that's still sitting up high and still turning us the right way. I have heard somebody um, speak, I was talking to them the other day and they told me they were mad at God. Mm. And I told them, ooh, that's it, you dangerous. Mm. I said, don't get mad at God, get mad at yourself because it's something that you didn't ask God for. He doesn't have to always come through when we want things, but he's on time God. And I told them, whatever you asked him for, it must not have been time. Or if things are happening to you, then you might need to change your life around. You have to be specific what yeah, you want. Exactly. You can't just say, no. I want a man. Yeah. Or, yeah. I want lots of money. Yeah. Say what you want. Or I want a house. You have to be specific. Exactly. They said in one, I was watching a show, a preacher show, where um, mm -hmm. they were talking about there's kind of like a your, your list for God. Mm -hmm. They you tore out the they tore, yeah, you know. they tore right. out the house of what they want. That's uh, right. What the house they wanted. What they wanted. You know, a picture of what they wanted as far as having a, a relationship with and you know how they wanted their kids to be they had this whole big and what did you thing. say you have to be what you have to be faithful and and you believe and you have to be what you specific gotta, specific yeah, right you got to be know. specific like you said you got to be specific thank you miss <laughs> yeah you do you got to be specific what you want from god things you want from anybody in life from your husband, from your wife, from your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your significant other. You have to be specific what you want from people. Because a lot of people, and this is just in perspective, a lot of people think God is like a GPS. Yeah. He's not our GPS where he's going to say, turn left. Oh, there's a big hole in the road there. Go to the left. Go to the right. 
you have to you go go by um, faith and you have to believe. Absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, like I said, a lot of people just think he's like a GPS and yeah. won't tell you. Oh, wrong road. Nope, this way. Nope. Or oh, more so like yeah. a even, even. I like that one too. Even like a microwave. Boop, boop. Yeah, I should have that right now. <laughs> Two minutes. Yeah. Life doesn't, <laughs> work. Life doesn't work like that. There's I want this job. job. Well, you gotta go to school to get that kind of thing. <laughs> right. Hello. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, and so that's the type of God we serve. So to discuss uh, the meeting a little bit, uh, if you'll join me on 496. Um, the first question is that Jesus' Jesus's compassion is seen mm -hmm. in his response to the Jewish leader and the hemorrhaging woman. How should we respond to Jesus and his commands knowing he is full of compassion? Well, you just answer that. Yeah. We got to be persistent. Mm -hmm. And believe. And know he's got it. So if you go back with me to, um, if you have your books, page 494, I'm going to read The People, Places, and Times of Jarius. And before you start, Sister Beth, anyone that would like to purchase these books, if you take and send um, Bishop chambers your information and send your money for the books are twenty dollars we will be glad to order them we'll be ordering the end of july they're twenty dollars for the new books coming out so anyone that would like to purchase to receive this book and able to follow along with us please be sure to send your money thank you and god bless coming to jesus on behalf of his beloved daughter jarius oversaw the administration of the synagogue at capernaum this was an elected position and a powerful one. Jarius was devout Jew and leader. He was the father of a 12-year-old daughter woman who he loved deeply. Jarius showed strong courage by going to Jesus, who was hated by the religious elders. However, because of his deep love for his daughter and his belief in Jesus, he approached Christ with humility, worship, and faith. Yes. And we can come, uh, looking at this, <coughs> the moral is that we can come to Christ in any way. Amen. It doesn't matter what your friend thinks. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. I don't do that. It's how you feel. If you have that faith and, and you believe, and it's just like I had mentioned earlier that that feeling that you get that <coughs> seems strange. Amen. You can come to him in any way. He doesn't care how you are or how you were raised this way. He wants you to come to him and give give that to him. Give problems, anything like the song says. Right. Also, in the liberated lesson, it says many people in our society are hopeless, helpless desperate, some are drug addicts, prostitutes, alcoholics, thieves, and some are just homeless. Many believers avoid these people and have difficult time ministering to them because of fear or lack of willingness to have compassion. How do you think Jesus feels about the advice? Which would we be if God showed us his mercy. How could you in your Bible study group on your church? You know, how would how would we think Jesus still about us if we if he turned his back on us? We'd be in trouble. We'd be in big trouble. Because there'd be so much well there's already chaos in the world, but we have help now. We yes. have help always. But if we don't have the help that we have now, yeah, we'd just be terrible. So I'm going to, if you'll join me on with your books on 497, mm -hmm. I'm going to give a little bit more light on the text that we've been talking about for Matthew 9, 18 to 26. Amen. Starting with 18. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. But... Come and lay thy hands upon her, and she shall live. 
And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. An official of the synagogue comes to Jesus and tells him that his daughter has just died. Matthew does not give much detail about who this man is, but we read from other gospel writers that his name is Jairus, and he is a ruler in the synagogue, mm -hmm. a leader in a local assembly. He comes in respect and even worship Jesus. The Greek word here, proskuna, is common outside of religious worship, referring to people bowing down, whether to God or rulers. Still, Jairus takes time to bow to Jesus, acknowledging who he was before he made his request. He comes in faith, clearly expecting Jesus would raise her from the dead. He goes even so far as to tell Jesus how to do it. Lie thy hands upon her, he said, and she shall live. This man has lost his daughter. Research has shown that the loss of a child is the most devastating death to cope with. No parent ever expects to have to bury their child, but this official does not come asking Jesus why his daughter died. This is the question we are all tempted to ask at times like these. We ask, but we usually get no answer because the only answer is the one Jesus gives his disciples shortly before his arrest. In the world, we will have tribulation. Jesus responds to the official's faith. He always responds to our faith too. He loves the kind of faith that gives people the boldness to come and ask and to believe. He can do something to remedy the situation. Jesus and his disciples begin to follow the official to his house. In number 20, it says, And behold a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may touch his garment, I shall be whole. Jesus and the disciples don't get very far before they encounter a woman, another person in need of healing from Jesus. She has been suffering with a hemorrhage for 12 years. It is easy to read that in black and white, but imaging going day after day for 12 years experiencing a serious medical condition. Jairus had shown boldness to approach Jesus and ask for healing. Mm -hmm. He might have suffered backlash from the Jewish religious leaders for seeking out Jesus. He simply approaches Jesus in the middle of his teaching and asks him to perform an unprecedented miracle. The woman with the issue of blood, however, is not bold in the same way that Jairus is bold. She does not approach Jesus directly, but she still approaches. It was taboo for a ministering woman to touch a man when she was considered unclean. So has to overwhelm that barrier as she comes up behind him and touches the hem of his garment. She had been convincing herself all the way as she maneuvered through the crowd. If I can touch his garment, I shall get well. The hem of Jesus' robe referred to the word used for tassels. Jews are instructed to wear on their clothing at all times as a reminder to keep the law. Reaching out to touch the tassel expressed the women's faith in the power of Israel, God, to heal as well as faith in Jesus as the other one sent from God. Her faith in Jesus' holiness is also on display here. Priests were not supposed to touch unholy things or they would become unholy themselves. This woman is unclean because of her sickness, but when she touches Jesus, instead of becoming unclean, she becomes clean. Amen. Others yes, yes, yes. later took up the approach to touching Jesus' robe to be healed. The word for healing is worth noting here. The Greek word sozo, translated to be made whole, is elsewhere translated to save. Matthew's previous uses of this word 
For when the disciples were afraid they were going to drown in a storm at the sea, and the angel's announcement that Jesus would save the people from their sins. It is most often used in the New Testament to refer to eternal salvation. But it is telling to, telling to see how salvation is understood as the same word is used to refer to physical healings and to bring whole, intact, and perfect. Amen. But Jesus turned about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Jesus recognized, respond to the rewards and faith. He first tells her to be of good comfort. This word is the verb from the noun courage. It is positive, command to come. Fear not. Often parents are instructed to tell children what they want them to do, rather than only scolding them for doing something they were not supposed to do. As Jesus calls the woman daughter, then it is no surprise that he acts as the parent, telling her, that should have courage, rather than telling her she should not be afraid. Then he gives her the joyous news that her disease has been cured. Her faith makes her well from the very hour. It is almost as though she is raised from the dead. She certainly has the new life after her in common with Jesus. Sometimes, when we have to come to Jesus, just like this woman, we have to make our way through the crowd, the obstacle, perhaps crawling, getting to him, any way we can. We need to have the kind of faith that keeps us going, knowing if we can just touch the hem of his garment. His garment, Jesus can bring healing and new life into our situations and circumstances. And when Jesus came into the early ruler's house and saw the ministers and the people making noises. He said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn. When Jesus arrives at the official's house, he finds they have already begun to mourn. The musicians have been hired, and there is a crowd widely grieving the loss of the girl. In their minds it is settled. The child is dead. There is nothing left to do but go through the motions of bereavement. Seeing all these people carrying on, Jesus tells them to give place. He is not a gentile with them. He is not gentle with them as he was. With the woman to them, he spoke courage. These people, he said, should just go away far away as the world is used to speak of people leaving the country. He speaks the truth to them all, saying that the girl is not dead, but asleep. The text says they laugh him to scorn, jerking and mocking him. It is most have seen there's the prophet coming into the house of death and saying these ridiculous things, it seems just as ridiculous to them as it is like to someday. Sometimes the things we believe, like faith, seems ridiculous to us. When we tell them what we are praying for or believing in, they might laugh us to scorn, but faith in Jesus is no laughing matter. Laughter and disbelief cannot contest with faith. 25 and 499. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame hereof went abroad into all that land. The people who laughed are put forth. Like Jesus, command for them to go away. This action is forceful. They have to be removed from the house, thrown out, even. The word also is translated, cast out, like demons. Only then does Jesus perform the miracle when unbelief is not present. 
takes the little girl by the hand, and she arises. It is touching to note that Jesus is asked to lay up hands on the girl. But when he comes in, instead of the authoritative and priestly, and priestly instance of laying hands on her, he instead chooses simply to hold her hand, bringing her gently back to life. There is surely a lot of sickness, and many accidents claim the lives of people we love at all ages. It seems we can come to terms with the loss of someone older, but no matter how young or old the person is, in those left behind experience a lot of pain and grief. Amen. We need to be aware that Jesus weeps with us, just as he wept with the tomb of Lazarus. Jesus knows and feels our pain. He is with us to assure us, just as he assures Martha that he is the resurrection and the life. Jesus had won the victory over death. Because of that, we can know that our loved ones in his kingdom and we can reunite them one day. So let us not grieve as those who have no hope. <clears throat> no hope. Let us instead look forward to the kingdom where every tear will be wiped away and there will be no more death, sorrow, or pain. The news about Jesus continued to spread. This is true with the gospel, the good news, Jesus said. He was anointed to preach it. It is the same good news we should be preaching today. Faith in Jesus makes you whole. And with that said, we are all healed by God. But in order to be healed, we have to have that faith. faith. Amen. As long as we have that faith, God is right there with us. And for this, we're mighty grateful. We thank you for coming with us this morning. We ask you, as you take it, leave from this to continue to keep your peace and honor and faith in God. Continue to pray in season and out of season. Continue to keep each and every one of us lifted up. Keep your families lifted up. God bless you, and we love you. Amen. Stay encouraged, everyone. Happy Father's Day once again. Amen.